Welcome to Life Devotions and thank you for joining me today. His righteousness and love sets me apart is the title of this devotion. Again, His righteousness and love sets me apart. Here in 1 John chapter 3, verse 10, it says, In this the children of God and the children of the devil are manifest. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God, nor is he who does not love his brother. You can clearly see the characteristics that are formed in us through our union with our loving Savior, Jesus Christ, who brings us and keeps us in that loving communion with the Heavenly Father through His indwelling life. What He has in heaven with the Father is what He reveals in us so that as He is, we may be also in this world, as it says in 1 John 4, verse 17, I think, or 18. And listen, dear friends, how the Lord Jesus longs for you to be filled with all of his fullness, as it says in Ephesians 4, 13 and Colossians 2, verse 9 and 10. He longs for you to be filled with all of his fullness. Jesus wants his whole church to become, to be his body, as it says in Ephesians 1, verse 21 through 23. He wants us as his church corporately to have the experience of his holy blessed presence in us and among us, but also as individuals. And this characteristic of his righteousness in God's sight, there is no continual Christian relationship with God without it. You cannot in your conscious perceive that righteousness of God without the Holy Spirit cleansing your heart with the blood of Jesus, or as it says in Hebrews 10, 22, sprinkling your heart from an evil conscience. And that that consciousness of falling short of his righteousness, of his glory, ev evaporates through the manifestation of his indwelling presence and that you're no longer conscious of failure. You're no longer conscious of falling short and, and for me personally, if I, if I in some way have anything that would defile me inwardly, it is more painful now than it ever has been. The scripture says to the pure, all things are pure. And the scripture also says, Jesus says in John 5 verse 8, the pure will see God. Oh my goodness, how I weep and wail and weep and wail before the Lord if I allow anything to defile my heart. One of the greatest powers you and I can have as a Christian is a tender, conscious, and a whole, holy surrender to the will of the Father. Both are given through Jesus Christ. How the Lord wants your conscience to be so tender that you inwardly recognize, no, not for me. No, I shun that because I don't, I don't want to yield myself to that. No, I won't talk that way. I won't think that way. I won't look at that. I won't go there. I, I'm not going to meet with that. No. And that you inwardly feel the tender conscience keeping you. And you feel that whole sur holy surrender of Christ's life in you to the will of the Father so compelling you to not live to please yourself, but to please your Father. Jesus said, I have come to do my Father's will. Don't you know I must be about my Father's business, he said when he was but 12 years old. And dear friends, the Heavenly Father wants it to be recognizable that we belong to Him and that people feel it in us. They feel that holy consecration to His will they can feel it in us that, that we're not for sale, we're not negotiable, we're, we're not compromising, we're not deceivers, you know, by, by saying we love God, but, but disprove it by the unrighteousness we entertain in our actions, in a way of talking and acting and reacting or how we talk about people. Friends, I plead with you, 
Let that righteousness of God in Christ, as it says in 2 Corinthians 5 verse 20, have such dominion over your whole person that that's what you first seek. You seek it. As Jesus would say, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness in Matthew 6 at uh, 33. And that it's so strong in you. No, 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 Father, no, Father, no, Father. I cannot go this way. No, Father, I cannot do this. But Father, it hurts so much. And Father, I, I feel so confused. But Father, one thing I'm not confused about, and that is that I want your will more than my own. I want your righteousness more than my own pleasure. Oh, dear friends, you're not an Esau, an Esau. What is an Esau? Esau sold his birthright for the moment of pleasure. We do the opposite. We sell the moment of pleasure for the inheritance of God. We say, no, no, my choice has been made. I, I love the Lord with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my mind, with all my strength, and I choose to follow him. No, I've got to do what's right in his sight. Sorry, I can't, I can't go there. I can't do that. Uh, I can't, I can't. I can't do it. You see, this is what sets us apart, friends. There has to be something about us that becomes obvious that we are not of this world. Jesus said, Father, they are not of the world even as I am not of this world. Jesus showed himself to be separate from the world. Satan had no claim on him because there was nothing in him that belonged to Satan that Satan could use as a string to pull his affections. No, his affections belong to the Lord. And friends, it's his righteousness and his love for one another that sets us apart. Let me just read you a couple of scriptures here before we complete. John chapter 13. Verse 34, a new commandment I give to you, that you love one another as I have loved you, and that you also love one another. By this all will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. Everyone will know, everyone will know. Why do you not curse them when they did this to you, when they were so cruel to you, when they were so unthankful, when they were so unkind to you? Why do you keep loving them? Why? I wouldn't love them. You can say 2 Corinthians 5, 14, the love of Jesus Christ compels me not to live to please myself. For if one died, all died. Therefore, we live no longer to please ourselves, but we live for him who loved us. What compels me is his love. He laid down his life for me while I was yet a sinner. While I was ungodly and I was even an enemy in my behaviors towards God. But yet Jesus laid down his life. There is no greater love than this, that one lays down his life. You see, friends, this is what identifies you and me. You cannot say you live in the light of God's presence and have hate and grudges and animosity in your heart towards others, you can't do it, you can't. You say, but pastor, <laughs> I mean, I would like to say amen to that, but, but what do I do with these terrible feelings of venge when vengeance and, and, and jealousy and competing and comparing and feeling threatened and, and, and having hateful feelings, what do I do with it? You need Jesus, you need Jesus. That's the simple answer. You need to say, Lord, save me. Save me from this. I repent of this. I don't want these thoughts. I hate these thoughts, Lord. I hate these feelings. Lord, I cannot justify it because they're in my heart. I can't blame them. I can't blame them for what's in my heart. Lord, I repent of having allowed this in my heart. Please forgive me. Please cleanse me. Please wash me clean. Come on, dear friends. Let the Holy Spirit so wash your heart with that precious blood so that you love to live right in God's sight and that what motivates you to live right is His righteousness. 
And it can be as simple as you going to a store and by accident, the person working at the till gives you 10 pounds too much and you get in your car and you realize it, you go back in the store to that person and said, hey, I just realized you gave me 10 pounds too much and you give it back. Yes, yes, that's being righteous, being merciful and forgiving people when they've done wrong, that's being righteous. The Bible says, Micah, I think it's chapter six, verse seven or seven, verse six, one of those. He says, what does the Lord require of you and me, but that we walk humbly with him, that we do justly and love mercy. Mercy is that love in action. It's that inward feeling of compassion and I myself need that constantly renewed in me. Yes, I've come a long ways to, from where I used to be, but I don't compare myself from where I used to be. I look to Jesus and he spurs me on that even though I'm not made perfect yet, I press on to lay a hold of all that for which he laid a hold of me. That's what he laid a hold of me, that I may reveal his righteousness and his love. Now, let me close here with this scripture that is quite famous. It's used by Paul also in 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and it's chapter Hebrews chapter 9 verse 23 and 24. Thus says the Lord, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. Let not the mighty man glory in his might. Let not the rich man glory in his riches, but let him who glories, glory in this, that he understands and knows me, that I am the Lord exercising loving kindness, judgment and righteousness in the earth. For in these things I delight, says the Lord. You know something, I think we need each other for this. I am so grateful that I'm married to this precious, precious soul that has such a pure conscience, Virginia. She's so lovely. And if I would ever allow a thought, and worse than that, speak that thought out, that is contrary to the loving Father's righteousness and love, she would look at me and she said, Robert. And I would immediately feel her innocent conscience calling upon my conscience. And I would instantly repent of the thought and especially of ever voicing a thought. It's one thing to have a thought, it's another thing to voice it. We need to take every thought that comes against the righteousness of God and against His love and cast it down and not allow it to take root in our minds. We should take every feeling of lovelessness and cast it down and we need to learn a language of righteousness and love. We need to have a vocabulary of His righteousness and love by which we can minister His righteousness and love. And we need one another to stir up love, to stir up right living before God and to help each other, encourage each other. I'm not talking about you being harsh or condemning or bitey. No, none of that will ever help anybody. It will make it worse, but that gentle, innocent conscience that makes people feel, mm, I shouldn't have said that. And you haven't said a word. I shouldn't have said that. And that it doesn't condemn, but convicts. No, we need the Lord. Amen. Have a good day.